what's happening. We rebuke every attack of the enemy, every form of distraction. God. We welcome you to this stream on this morning. Come on and worship God. Heavenly Father, we just come this morning thanking you and praising you for who you are. We thank you, Father God, that we have another opportunity to serve your kingdom in this capacity. We pray, Father God, that everyone that's tuned into this broadcast right now hears a word from you, hearken to your voice and obedient to what you're saying, God. We pray, Father God, for the city of Memphis. We pray, Father God, for those that are dealing with COVID-19. We decree and declare healing in their bodies, Father, in the mighty, mighty name. church and begin to worship, begin to honor him, begin to bless him. Glory, 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 glory. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just go in and worship this morning? Come on, this morning. Can we just go in and worship this morning? Come on, let's worship. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Praise to your name. Turn that up, come on, turn that up. Oh, Lord, Jesus. for your name. Yes, come on, praise to God. Come on, worship with me this morning. Come on, worship with me. Come on, you'll you watch me live on streaming. Come on, you touch your neighbor, tell your mother, your friends. To, let's, let's go and worship. Living life is on TV this morning. Come on, let's worship. We're on Facebook Live. Come on, let's worship. Come on, worship. Oh, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. For your name is great. Yes, for your name.
Yes, it is. And Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in this house this morning, God. Those who watch me live from around our country, God, from all the way from New York to Maryland to Florida to St. Louis, God, to Pakistan, to Africa, to Israel, those who watch me, God, throughout Memphis and Shelby County, those who watch me from Memphis, Memphis Tennessee, Lord God, to, to Mississippi, God, we give you praise this morning. God, we thank you for the things you have already done and what yes, you're about Lord. to do. Yes. God, we lift our hands up, not for body exercise, but, Lord God, to give you reverence who you are and what you have already done. You are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. Say it with me. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. God, I thank you for all of you what you're doing right now in this midst of God. Even in this, this summer months, God, we still give you praise. It may be hot outside, God, but yet we're not going to stop praising you. We thank you, Lord God, for the things you're about to show us, God, the things you're about to reveal. God, I thank you right now for the power that's established from heaven now is in our hands, God, because you give us authority to claim that and proclaim it, God, and speak out those things we desire to see in our lives. Oh, I give him praise. Praises to your name. Come on, come on, one more time. One more time, come on. Praises to your name. Come on, thanks for God. Oh, Lord. Hey. I won't be long for you this morning. I want to hit you with something real hard. Hallelujah. I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say this morning. This might hit in your house. If it's not, it should hit somebody's house. But what I'm about to say this morning, it's going, it's going, it's going to raise up your eyes. On let, for now on, let no trouble, no one trouble me. 
for I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says something, I have on me, I've been marked by In order to get forgiveness out of you and to, and to forgive others, there are some things on you that's holding you back. There are some scars. Listen to me. Scars. Hallelujah. Some scars. Listen to me now. Some t there are types of scars that we get through playing sports, through war wounds, surgical cuts, and even accidents. These are scars that remind you. When you went to war, you got cut, you got hit. You got your, some people got their leg broke, blown off. There are some people who have surgeries. These scars on their back, on their back and their faces, they can remind you of the event you, when you it took to get that thing fixed. Are y'all watching me? And then there's other scars. And one of the scars I really hate to talk about is when you have an accident. Some people have accidents in vehicles and houses and things happen and burns. These are scars that still with them. Let me ask you this question. Who have hurt you? Listen, who have hurt you? Some scars remind us that sin is painful. This scar came from pain and bad relationships, abuse, mental and physical. Here's the one I want you to hear real quick locally. This other scar a pain came from lack of love. Come on. There's some of you on watch me right now. Glory to God. You've been hurt so many times. You scarred on that last relationship. You've been scarred trying to develop a relationship with a, a, a male figure or a female figure or a co-worker. And you just can't get along with nobody. You've been scarred somewhere in your life. Are y'all watching me this morning? Scar remind me of the pain you've been through. I'm working on something. Hallelujah. Even relationships. You, I mean, no matter how much you try, you just cannot get the man you've been looking for in your life or get the woman you look for in your life. There's something in your past has scarred you. Hallelujah. Scars also remind us not to make the same mistake again. There are scars on us. Experience. Remind us, I won't get in that situation again. No, not this time. No, not this time. I, I, glory to God. I, I remember how I was, but I won't let that happen again. My God. You, some of y'all been married how many times? Two, three, two, four times? And you, 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 you continue to repeat the same mistake? 
If I got burned in the fire over the stove, I remind myself, I won't do that again. That's too hot. Who I'm talking to? Scar remind us that not to make the same mistake again. How many of you all continue to repeat the same thing over and every week, every year, the same thing? You still doing the same thing and you've been scarred, but you, 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 you see the signs in front of you and you still make the same mistake. Same mistake. Right. If you got a ticket on, on Highway 70 and you know the police there every week and you still drive by flying on that same spot, you're going to get a ticket. So how about you do it every week? After a while, the police going to say, there's enough is enough. When are you going to stop and recognize these signs in front of you? Are y'all listening to me this morning? When are you going to recognize not to repeat the same mistake? Same. This time next year. I don't want to wait till next year. This week, this is my last week. This is my, this is my last hour. I won't repeat this again. Matter of fact, to this, this moment, I say to myself, this is the moment. You hurt me. You, was, you, you, you cut me. This won't ever happen again. Now you raise up this wall. Come on. You raise up this wall that I won't let nobody else in. Come on. Are y'all listening to me this morning? I'm not going to let nothing else hurt me again. So now you block everything else from coming in because now you have not forgiven the issue in your life. That scar come on, come on. is keeping you from for forgiveness. Come on. My God. Come on. My God. You the house, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At times, scars are not physical on the outside, but emotional and from the inside. I'm talking about these kind of scars. Come on. You can see a scar. You can see a surgery mark. You can, my God, you can see, you can see uh, a cut or wound on the outside. But what's going on on the inside of you right now? You put on your makeup. You put on these nice clothes. Come on, come on, you put your church face on. on Praise pastor. the Lord, saints. Come on, and you toe up and flow up on the inside. So we cover up these scars by makeup, putting on different hairstyles. We buy clothes, we buy cars, we, we, we do things to cover up. Some scars cannot be covered. Come on. Some scars cannot be covered. What's happening is you never forgave the thing that hurt you or cut you, or scarred you on the inside. My God, I, rec I recall years ago, I, I don't know how many times I told this story. Years ago, as a young man, a young boy, that uh, uh, I used to have a bully, and this bully would always mess with me. And so as I got older, this bully was, you know, he still wanted to, to mess with me. And, but I'm getting a little, I'm a little taller and a little stronger. And, and so this bully kept on pushing and kept on pushing. As long as the bully keep pushing you, that scar going to stay there until you tell him or her, stop. Come on. Deal with. Come on. You got to deal with that scar, to, not with. tomorrow. Right now in your bedroom, watching me on TV, whatever you in your house or driving down the car, deal with that scar now. The, the buck stops here. Come on. Come on, Greg. Enough is enough. As long as the bully keep pushing you and you don't say nothing, that's what's going on with our society. We've been bullied so long. Come on. We've been bullied so long over the years, over the years, from all the way to 1920, from slavery. We've been bullied too long. Now the world is saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. Good. We want justice. Yeah. And we, but before that we do all that, we learn to forgive. I forgive what they did to me. But guess what? You ain't going to push me no more. I'll, I'll let you off this time, but don't push me. Don't push me. Don't push this button. It ain't but a few, a few reaches away to push that button again. Some of y'all, a few inches away to push it. It don't take much to remind you of the scar. Watch this then. At times, the hurt from the inside is much more serious than the hurt from the outside. Yeah. There are some things in you, that, glory to God, that, my God, it's, 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 it continues going on. It hurts so bad, and no one can see it. What gets to me, this scar is unseen. Come on. The flesh will heal soon. Listen, guys. A scar, a cut on the body. You see the blood, you see the scratch. Somebody said that after a while, it'll heal. Yeah. And then you'll see the scar. 
But there's some scars that have not been healed. Come on. It's not a flesh wound. It's an inner wound. Come on. And you never forgave that issue. Listen, I want you to catch this right here. These scars are there to remind us for the future. Hold up. Either you're going to stay there in that old stuff or you're going to move forward. Some scars remind you if it's, if it's in there, it's going to push me to my next level. Oh, y'all listen to me this morning. This scar, now, I remember how I was and how you did to me. But this one, now, I know as long as I, if I can see this thing, I'm going to move myself forward. I'm going somewhere this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere this morning. I am not even halfway through it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want to talk about this right now. I need to hit this real quickly because a lot of saints and saints Christians are smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes. They take cigarettes in a scar that, that develop lung cancer. And they, we, 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 this is a scar you need to get rid of. You also have uh, other diseases in our body. You need heart surgery and other things, physical problems. And through alcohol, we drink, we do all these things. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Christians. We, we drink, we, we smoke, we do everything like everybody else. And we develop our bodies not healthy as it should be. I'm working on something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's read this real quickly. Watch this, guys. Galatians, New King James Version. Galatians 6. Chapter 6, verse 7 through uh, 10. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows in the flesh of the, of, of the flesh will of the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit will of the flesh of the spirit reap everlasting life. I'm going to read that again because I'm, I'm talking too fast. Verse 8. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in the due season we shall reap if we do not lose hearts. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Those we need to do good, as you're a man or woman of God, a Christian, you walk by faith, you, you're a Christian. But yet, I see a lot of Christians are putting scars on other Christians. We hurt other believers. We just like everybody else. We, that's out of all the saints of God. Whatever you do, it, it'll come back on you some kind of way of, of form. You do wrong, eventually wrong will catch up with you. Whatever you sow, you will reap. He said, but I want you to catch that one. I don't know if we heard, heard, heard enough. Verse 10, therefore, as we are, have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are in the household of faith. So if you got somebody right now, glory to God, you have not forgave. My God, my God. You want to do right by them or do them do right? By them? My God, you need to get that thing cleaned up. I'm working on something. Let's go some more. I got a few more minutes left. Now, listen to you guys. Forgiveness means give up the suffering of the past and being, being willing to forge ahead with a greater potential for inner freedom. I'm going to read it again. Forgiveness means giving up the suffering of the past and being willing to forge ahead for a far greater potential for inner freedom. I want to be free. I want to be free. Do you want to be free? Besides the reward of letting go of a painful past, a painful past, you got to let it go. There are more powerful health benefits. So when you hold stuff in over a long period of time, it requires health issues. You've been holding this grudge since 1988, and you never forgave John, Susan, Mary, you know, you know Elizabeth, Keith, 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 and all the rest of them. 
you stay, when you see them, something does something to you. You never forgave how they done you as a kid. You, matter of fact, you're 30 years old, and you still remember what happened to you when you're 8 years old. And you see that person right now, you're ready to fight, or you're holding something in. So in order to move forward of a greater inner freedom, you got to let go of a painful past. Watch this, guys. Watch this. What you talking about, Pastor? Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 21. Then Peter, then came to Peter, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him seven times? Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. So there are some numbers in this thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. How many times if somebody hurts you or the same thing, they keep doing the repeating the same thing. And I notice that the people who do who have bad relationships, and I used to watch how women forgave the guy for doing things repeatedly over and over and over. I never could understand that. Because there was something in her heart. She's saying, I forgive him. I never knew and understand until now I got to an adult. That women will forgive a man much quicker than a man will forgive a woman. What you say? Oh, I messed that up right there. I'm, I'm all on Facebook. A woman will forgive a man much quicker. Well, Pastor, I, I beg the difference. Well, live long enough. Now, men do forgive. Yes, we do. There's some good men out there. It's still some good men. Listen, it's still some good men. I want them, bless God. And everybody under my umbrella, there's some good men. Yeah. But I kept watching over the years, the people keep repeating the same thing over and over and messing up. I, I, can I be real? Some, some men cheat on their family, their wives, over and over. I got to see them on Facebook now. I'm on, it's too late now. I can't go back. You in the ministry? Oh, I had to say this. You in the ministry, and you cheating on your spouse over and over and over again, and she keep forgiving you. It's thing. It's, it's a thing called grace. What you say? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And you think can nobody see you? You think can nobody's not listening? You got people talking under the under the behind closed doors. So watch this guy. Forgiving that person seven times 70. Matthew chapter 6 says this, verse 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, somebody said but, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So we point the finger. When folks do things wrong, and you ain't but a, a few inches away from doing the same thing, you're a couple of seconds away. Uh, my God, Pastor Henry, you don't understand. I do understand. I've been on this earth now for over some years now. I won't call, call the number. I've seen some things, with glory to God, and have learned to forgive. And as a matter of fact, it's a process, because I want healing. I want to see, when you forgive and release that off of you, something chemical happens in the body. And not only is it chemical, but it's also spiritual. Now your prayers can be heard. Some of y'all have forgave since, forgave since 17, 1977. Some of y'all have forgave since, since 2001. You still hold on to that. You need to let that thing go, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this, guys. I'm, I'm wrapping this thing up in a few more seconds. I'm wrapping this thing up. Refusing to forgive is a sin. Oh, I didn't know that, Pastor Henry. Refusing to forgive. Oh, my God. Some of y'all don't want to let it go. You don't want to let it go. Let it go and live. 
Let it go, saints of God, and live. Refusing to forgive is a sin. If we receive forgiveness from God, we must give it to others who hurt us. If God forgave us, if God forgave us, you need to forgive those who hurt you. Oh, I, I want to jump right, jump right here. When Christ was on the cross, when he was on the cross, ain't none of us been beat with no whip. Ain't none of us been putting on thorns in our head. Ain't none of us were drunk no a, a sponge of vinegar. Ain't none of us have. None of y'all walk miles with a cross on your back. None of y'all done that. None of y'all got a, well, you got a spear stuck to your side, but it's a different kind of spear. And you, glory to God, and that pain is so unbearable. But Jesus bared all that for us. And he could have called legions of angels to rescue him, but he did not. He asked Father, Father, forgive them. Some of y'all say, Pastor, I'm not Jesus. Guess what? If you're a Christian, refusing to forgive is a sin. We are to trust God for justice and forgive the person who offended us. Oh, Pastor Henry, did you hear to go there? Who in this room, and they're on Watch Me Live, have been offended? Tell me, you know somebody, even you, you live on this earth long enough, you've been offended some kind of way. Rather be small or great. And you hold that thing to this time last year, and you still offended. And you wonder why. You, you don't feel good sometimes. You have a headache and migraines. Your money's funny. You're sowing seed, you're paying tithes, and yet you never forgave. You're still offended. Oh, yes, Pastor, that's right. Things are hindered some, in some places of form because you uh, never released it. My God. My God, Pastor Henry. That doesn't mean that we must forget the offense. However, usually that be beyond our power. Forgiveness means releasing the other from blame. Oh, pastor. Forgiveness means releasing the other from blame. Leaving the event to God's hand to move on it. When you said, when the person offended, I'm about to go home. When the person who offended you said, hey, and you know they're wrong and never really repent of it and say, I go, I'm going to you. Sir, ma'am, I forgive you. Now God going to deal with them. He going to reach cold to the head. They won't be able to sleep some phone. They won't be able to rest. When you say, I forgive you, and you and they know they should have came to you first, I'm going to you first. I'm going to you. I'm going to get in your face. Listen, this didn't work out. This ain't working out for me. Hey, it, was, it is what it is. I forgive you, but I'm moving on. Are y'all watching me this morning? I'm moving on. Somebody say, I got to move on. Last but not least, forgiveness transforms anger and hurt to healing and peace. Forgiveness can, uh, uh, can help you overcome feelings of depression, anxiety, rage, and personal relational conflict. When you release that thing, glory to God, you release so many things in your life. You don't feel depressed no more. Oh, God. Anxiety, you don't get as mad as fast because all that compound anger on grudges over the years, you get angry too fast. You, you too quick to get into an argument. Who I'm talking to? You too quick to get mad at something so small, it's not even worth the discussion. The wind blown outside. My car dirty. Are you serious? Come on, come on. I remember one time, glory to God, living next to the next door neighbor. It kept raining outside, kept raining outside. The next couple of weeks, days went by, it was hot, it was hot. So I began to water my grass. My neighbor came to me and said, hey, knocked on my door. Watch this, y'all. Knocked on my door. He said, hey, Mr. Lavin. I said, shit, come on, come outside, I need to talk to you. Went outside and talked to him. What's going on, bro? He said, hey, your water hose is putting water on my, on my cement concrete driveway, and it's messing it up. I said, come show me. I, come show me. So my water hose going from my yard to the concrete in his driveway, back and forth. He said, "We got to do something about that." I said, "I said, well, let me let me say this quick, quickly. 
I said, a couple of days ago it rained. And it rained for almost three, four days. My grass only been watered for a few hours. So what's the difference? He looked at me, y'all, and he said, forget this, and walked away. I'm not going to hold it in. That was too small for me to deal with. That's, that's too small. Something is so small, it's not worth the anger. Release it. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Last but not least. Forgiveness means giving up suffering of the past or being willing to, to forge things in the, in, the, in the future. Forgiveness. I'm watching this now. Watch this now. Forgiveness means truly letting it go. Forgiveness means truly letting it go of past disappointments of past hurts or acts of abuse. Pastor Henry, help me right there as we close. Whoever hurts you, whatever grudge you've been holding on for since 1999, oh my God, and you still thinking about that old boyfriend, whoever, well you know what I'm talking about. Whatever your dad did to you as a little kid, whatever your mama's Whatever happened to you as a boy, you grew up now, you in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, even in your 60s, and you still remember how you, were, you experienced that pain. And you wonder why you have these different type of attacks on you. I say, try this for me. Try say, sir, I don't know where you are, but I release you in my life. Woman who hurt me when I was dating you, I release you in my life. You can't hurt me no more. That was a scar. I'm giving it to God. Give those scars to God. You listen to me? That man that used to fight you all the time, that can stop today. While he's sleeping, you whisper in his ear, hey, this is the last time he's going to hit me. He's going to keep on hitting until you tell him this the last time. He mean what you mean. It's the last time I'm going to get church hurt. Because church folk getting hurt in church. It's the last time. If my pastor didn't hurt me, I'm going to be there on Sunday morning. And if he did, I mean, you need to confront who hurt you. That's why we're having so much things going on in our country. We've been hurt. Now the world knows that the people will not tolerate injustice anymore. The days are over a turn the cheek. You didn't slap me too many ways. Now, slapping the days are over. It's time to confront. Hallelujah! It's time to confront what has been aiding us all these years. The earth has been in pain. The black race has been in pain. We've been hurting too long. Now, we saying we forgive you, but you will not hurt us again. Can't hang me no more on the rope. You can't put your knee on my neck no more. You can't put your foot on my head no more. Are y'all listening to me this morning? That's the last time you abuse me. That's the last time you use your words to bring me down. This is the day the Lord has made. I lift myself up. Say, get up off that couch. Get off that bed. My God, my God, my God. Walk around your room. You said, self. You tell yourself, today is the last day I will be abused in here and in my heart. I release you today. I release that past today. My God. Ah, I'm not giving up. Hallelujah, I'm not giving in. But I forbid this attack on my life, your life today. To this, my God. Said, somebody said, this too shall pass. But it's not going to pass until you do something. It's not going to pass until you say something. So all my brothers out there who've been cut, who've been bruised, whatever relationship, whatever, by God, and your job, your, your girlfriend, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Say, my, get, off of your, get off that couch. Quit moking around. Stop.
Stop drinking, stop smoking, and live like God told you to live. I'm talking about men and women of God. I'm talking about my God who used to be involved with church. You stop coming to church. You come when you want to come. You want to stay in the bed and you hurt, you drinking. My God, you smoking. You doing things that you know is not, you know it's not right. God is calling for warriors. He's calling for my God. He come, so if you, my God, you've been in the military, he needs somebody to know you can fight and take a lick. So saints of God, a strong saint can take a lick. My God, I got to get out of here. My God, you, you've never been in jail, so you don't know what jail feel like. You don't know what jail feel like. That person know how to take a lick and be in jail. Some people know how to, to take a lick and keep on, keep on ticking. So I'm telling you this morning, if you've been in jail in your mind, the jail in your heart, it's time to get the keys of life and unlock that thing. Take the keys. I unlock that, Brother Gavin. I unlock that, Sherman. Hallelujah. I unlock that. I unlock that key. I found the key that's been holding me back. That's for unforgiveness. I found the key that's been keeping me from receiving for the best. I want to be healed. And I'm tired of being sick. I'm not going to be depressed. This is the last day I will be depressed. I love you, saints of God. It's going to pass. It shall pass. But you got to say something. Your bullet's been pushed on you way too long. You've been holding on something for so many years. Grudges after grudges after grudges. And you wonder why you're not receiving from God. This too is today on this Sunday morning, July, what is it, July 19, 2020, 2020. I release you. I take away everything you've done to me in the past. I shall live. Share with me. We shall live and we shall not die. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. So if everybody's watching me by live stream on Facebook Live, YouTube, wherever you're watching this, today is your victory. Hallelujah. I'm claiming it. See, I claim my victory, Pastor Henry. I claim my victory. My God, I got my strength now. Hallelujah. You can't beat me no more. Hallelujah. You can't cheat on me no more. I release you, man. I release you, woman. And I... words in my mouth. I love you and I need you. Need you to be divine. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. Hey, I need you to survive. I won't harm you no more. With words in my mouth. Come on, Saints. I love you. Come on. Every eye closed, every head bowed, wherever you are watching me. You know you've been hurt. And you said, Pastor, that helped me so many. That helped me so many ways. I want you to say with me, Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of holding things way too long. I released that thing in my past. I forgive him and her, whatever job, whatever thing that had been holding me down. I didn't even know it, Lord, until you said something about it today. These old members, God, keep coming up and repeating itself. I give that thing back to you, God. I, re I rededicate my life today. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. So repeat after me. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he was raised on the third day. And Lord, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And I receive you being my father. And my Lord, I will not live in other way anymore. I'm changing at this hour. You know you need that. You got to start right there, but it won't end there. It's a process. Y'all receive that. Give God some praise. Love you. Come here, give me some hearts, y'all. Come on, y'all like that? Give me some hearts. Come on, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. At this time, glory to God. My son Gavin's coming in a few minutes. Listen, y'all. Tune in coming up this Tuesday, Touch Tuesdays. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tune in this church Tuesday. We're going to do some things. I love you all, and I will see you guys. August the 1st. Don't forget now, Living Life with the Church, August the 1st, at Living Life, 4300 4, Raleigh Grange Road. We will have a glory, a glorious time of worship and praise and a fellowship that we have never had in a long time. Love you. See you in a few minutes. Amen, amen. What a powerful, powerful, powerful word. I know that spoke to me. Unforgiveness. So make sure that you digest that on that word. Meditate on that word. And we want to thank you for tuning in to Victory Live broadcast on today. Be sure to visit us on our website at www.onlyjustbelieve.org. And also if you want to sow, be sure to go to our PayPal or our Cash App, which is dollar sign campaign 300. And don't forget August 2nd, August 2nd, it's going to be a time of praise and much needed fellowship that we've been needing. We've been, whew, I know I need it, but uh, be sure to be here. Be sure to check your uh, note, check our Facebook pages, check your phones, and we'll make sure to keep you all in touch. And until next time, keep us, keep Pastor lifting in prayer, keep Pastor Lori lifting in prayer, and we thank you, we love you, and be sure to stay tuned for Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday night for Touch Tuesday, and we'll see you again next Sunday. Hallelujah. Just hold on to your faith.